What you are doing, you are making it monthly of the first amendment. It's been seven months. You've not called on me. You've not uh, my message yet. I'm saying that does not run. Does not run. Fun times. Welcome, guys. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the press briefing room. This is not right. This is not China. This is not Russia. This is the United oh! States. This is the White House. No, it's been seven months. I you to the rest of us are here too, pal. He is being seven months. You guys have not done that anything wrong for me. If you have grievances, you should bring them to her later. I have right done that. I have done that. All my right emails have been ignored. And the press corps is tired of dealing with this. It is not about that, you, Simon. understand that you get questions all the time and you don't the understand why it is to sit here for eight months and being discriminated hey, against. You you understand you that you're in the front row and you feel comfortable and you get questions all the time. And there are time. people in the back who don't get any questions. Don't make assumptions about what the rest of us do. Mind your manners when you're in there. If you have a problem, you bring it up afterwards. What has just occurred this last 10, 15 minutes is unacceptable. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was the work of the great Simon Atiba from Today News Africa in Washington, D.C., triggering cringe Jean Pierre. Simon Atiba getting a lot of followers here. Hey, man, good for you, Simon. Blowing up. Simon Atiba is, of course, a uh, veteran survivor of domestic terrorism attacked by pirates in the Gulf. With an AK-47 to his head, kidnapped in Nigeria, dumped in the woods and left for dead, arrested in Cameroon during an investigation, kept in a dark cell to be sidelined at the White House. Ladies and gentlemen, Tucker Carlson, one of his favorites, now being attacked by The View, so that shows you that Simon is doing a good job. Thank you to the 20,000 new Twitter followers who joined me after my interview with Tucker Carlson. Ladies and gentlemen, despite the attacks, I will not disappoint you. I have told you, they have told you that I'm the bad guy who goes to the briefing room to yell questions. That is false. It is absolutely false, and they are very upset about Simon Atiba asking questions. So upset, in fact, that when Simon Atiba and I uh, did an interview just recently, I asked him, you know, do they essentially ask for questions in advance from these reporters? Like they don't call on you because places like CNN and MSNBC give them questions in advance? This is what Simon had to say. Simon, you said something earlier in this interview. You said that they give questions to Jen, uh, to Jen Psaki or Karine Jean-Pierre. They, they pre-approve their questions. Does that happen? Yes. So the, the White House actually reaches out to journalists and they ask them to send topics. And they justify it by saying that if you send topics, we have a more comprehensive answer for you. People end up sending topics and questions. But if you want to ask about the laptop, Hunter Biden, China, Biden, the connection, the financial connection, you can send it in advance. And so she won't call on you. What they do is they now send softball questions. I've spoken with one, at least one journalist in the room who told me that they can't send the real questions because they won't call on them. And, and it, it's... So the whole press briefing is rigged, right? You have 49 seats in the briefing room. You have people in the first and second rows who get all the questions. And you, you know, a lot of them send topics or questions in advance. And she comes and she reads from the binder. If you're in the briefing room and she doesn't have your questions, she sees you as a danger. Or if you ask questions that the people, the American people really care about, she won't call on you. She will silence you. She will sideline you. She may even discriminate against you, which is what is happening to me. I'm just trying to do my job. I'm saying, let's do our job. Let's ask the questions that people care about. Let's build trust. Let's build connection. Let's build relationships with people. Let's not become friends of the government going to the White House correspondent dinner, not to connect with other journalists, but to just, you know, the band me, I won't be able to attend the White House Correspondents Association dinner uh, next month. But I don't really care. I'm just doing my job. The White House that is so obsessed with diversity, equity, and inclusion certainly doesn't want to include Simon Atiba, who is himself an immigrant and from Africa. Uh, they don't care about Simon Atiba's skin color or story. They just want to silence him as they do regularly. Um, is, is the 
Kelvi, can you clarify what, 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 what you, can you clarify what your yes, sir. White House is? You said that our can policy you, for wait, China wait. has been consistent. Your name is Simon, right? Yeah, I really si want Simon? To ask Simon? 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 <laughs> Simon. Simon. Sir, I'm going to I'm going to call on this man. Now, sir, listen. Now, I've been polite to you, but I expect a little bit of respect in return. You know, you know where we are this is the White House press briefing room, and you need to be more respectful. I'm going to call on this reporter. The U.S. policy toward Taiwan is also just a uh, greasy, greasy little. Pentagon spokesperson John Kirby. Simon Ativa is asking questions a la what you used to get in the Trump administration. Remember when people would scream bloody murder, blood filling their eyes, screaming, frothing at the mouth, Jim Acosta. He was defended in court by the White House Correspondent Association. April Ryan is another one. Super low IQ lady would just scream. I was in the room once where she screamed over me. This was applauded by people during the Trump administration, but watch what happens to Simon when he tries to ask a question about the origins of COVID. Dr. Fauci, um, but, but she's only, she's only, she's only three good questions. questions. Not being me. Not you ask your question, you should allow her to ask Jeremy, it's Jeremy, it's Jeremy. Dr. Fauci it's about the origin of COVID-19. It is not, it is not your turn. It is not your turn. You can't, you can't get a press briefing. You need to call from people across the room. She has a valid question. She's asking about the origin of COVID. I hear the question. And Dr. Fauci is the best person. I, I, I hear the question. question, but we're not doing this the way you want it. This is a disrespect. <laughs> it is. I'm done. Simon, I'm done. Oh. Simon, I'm done. I'm done with you right now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. A hair on fire. We don't ask about the origins of COVID. What did COVID ever do to us other than collapse our economy and kill 7 million people? And it was created by Dr. Fauci. And Dr. Fauci belongs in prison. And the people who violate the First Amendment take an oath to uphold it. They also should be punished. Corinne Jean-Pierre said it was unacceptable for Simon to ask a question. We asked Simon about that in a recent interview. Um, is it unacceptable? For him to be a journalist this response we thought was bombshell watch so simon yesterday you were maligned from the press dais this is my final question for you because it we did watch your hit on tucker last night we do think that you are the bravest perhaps last journalist left in that room last real journalist although we do have a lot of love for peter ducey uh you were maligned from the press dais by Corinne Jean-Pierre. Uh, she talks specifically about you, and we wanted to give you, as a final question here, a, a chance to respond, because she certainly won't give you a chance to speak. Uh, we'll play the clip for you, and then perhaps get your response. What you are doing, you are making it monthly of the first time. Let us under the quorum, please. It's been seven months. You've not called on me. You've not uh, my message I'm saying that does not right. Fun right. times. Welcome, guys. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome to the press briefing room. It's not right. This is not China. This is not Russia. This is the United ah! States. This is the White House. No, no, it's the been seven months. I sent you a sign in the rest of us are here too, pal. He is not not the one. You guys have not done anything wrong with me. If you have grievances, you should bring them to her later. I have right done that. I have done that. All right, my emails have been ignored. And the press corps is tired of dealing with this. It is not about that, you, Simon. It's not that you get questions all the time and you don't so understand what it is to sit here for eight months and being discriminated eight? against. You you understand that you're in the front row and you feel comfortable. And you get questions question on this. There time. are people in the back who don't get any questions. Don't make assumptions about what the rest of us do. Mind your manners when you're in here. If you have a problem, you bring it up afterwards. What has just occurred this last 10, 15 minutes is unacceptable. So is it unacceptable for you to actually ask no, questions? It's, and more it's, importantly, what was that scream? There was someone who, someone screamed. Yeah. <laughs> People yeah. scream at you? Yeah, you know, so, so first of all, the second guy, the Brian guy, you know, he's a former playboy, you know, journalist who now works yeah. for CNN. And he's a disgrace. He, he got into a fight in the Rose Garden and he was removed from the White House Correspondents Association last year. He, I can send you the video of how he attacked Sarah Huckabee Sanders when she was press secretary, and then went on CNN to brag about it. When they asked him if he wanted to apologize, he said, I will rather apologize to the women and the people that former President Trump had offended. He's a disgrace, and that's the guy who has the God to come and criticize me for trying to ask serious questions. 
and and so it it's a show a clown show you know the white house press briefing press briefing most of them are rigged the questions are known in advance and she calls on people who send her who will ask softball questions if you're like me simon at table and decide to ask real questions about real issues and international issues they will ignore you it's unacceptable to have someone in the briefing room who has been discriminated against for seven months and you don't call on him it's not just disrespecting me it's disrespecting the entire continent of africa when you are claiming that you are trying to strengthen ties between us and africa it's a shame so it's not about it's not it is unacceptable what they are doing to me and those people who came to like it's almost insane to have someone in the first row who gets multiple questions all the time. He asks questions that we can't even hear. People who sit in the back of the room can't even hear what he's talking about. And he asks questions that most Americans will not remember the next day. And to have that guy pretend or try to lecture me, it's a disgrace. He's a disgrace to the First Amendment that protects freedom of the press, free speech, and the right to petition government. And, you know, at that same press briefing, that first guy from Reuters got multiple questions, while most people in the briefing room didn't get any single question. So that's what is unacceptable, to discriminate against people you disagree with. Those are things that happen in China, in Russia, in a lot of dictatorships in Africa, where you are afraid to ask a question because you may be arrested, jailed, and punished because you ask a, a question to, you know, to a government official. This is the US. In the United States, is the most advanced country in the world because we have basic freedoms. We respect people, we respect people's rights. At least in theory, that's how it should be. And that's why the US is different from all those dictatorships. And for me to face discrimination in the Biden White House, it's shocking to me. Thank you for watching. Our channel's here to meme the libs until they cry and then to meme them crying. Their tears, they taste just like sweet, delicious ice cream. Salty, too. We ridicule the establishment and the libs because of you. Your support keeps us going. So if you like what you saw, please punch the subscribe button, click like, and ring the little bell so that you know when we're live. Don't you want to know when we're live? And make sure that you subscribe to our email list just in case the plug gets pulled, as tends to happen. If you want to see more of our videos, click here or here. My name is Benny Johnson. Stay free. Base Patriots.